Dreamscape presents Death Rides the Pecos by Brett Halliday, narrated by Eric G. Dove. Chapter 1 Since early morning, Twister and Chuckaluck had ridden silently in the distance-devouring jog-trot of men who had ridden far and have yet far to ride accompanied by the inevitable cloud of fine white alkali dust rising from the lonely wagon road, following along the west bank of the Pecos River south from the New Mexico line. Twister's roan and Chuckaluck's buckskin cayuse were indistinguishable beneath the layer of chalky dust covering every hair, but neither a mantle of dust nor low-tilted hat brims nor bright bandanas covering nose and mouth could hide the identity of the two men though the latter gave them the appearance of gay and defiant bandits. Twister, a head taller and twenty pounds lighter than his companion, sat lithely erect in his saddle, gray eyes peering alertly through the murky cloud of dust, ceaselessly scanning the barren landscape on either side and ahead, in the manner of one not anticipating trouble but prepared for instant vigilance. The left side of his lean, tanned face was passive, almost serene. But above the bandana on the right side, the jagged scar of an ancient knife cut ran from the lobe of his ear upward to lift the corner of the eye in a satanic slant. Beside him, and a next length behind as was his habit, Chuckaluck's heavier body slouched comfortably in the saddle. His round, good-humored face sagged with weariness. The mild blue eyes beneath whitish brows, which gave him an expression of perpetual surprise, were closed against the reflected glare of the sun and the stinging heat. As different in disposition as in looks, these two had traveled danger trails from Wyoming to the Arizona border, through the icy ranges of the Rockies to the somnolent sand dunes of New Mexico. Content to let Twister do the worrying, and for the most part the thinking also, Chuckaluck long ago gave up trying to quirt his lethargic brain cells into keeping pace with Twister's keener perceptions. Stolid and unimaginative, he left the watching to Twister, while he had only to watch Twister in order to know the moment to act. He was ready to back up any play Twister made, and his lightning draw had been the death of many men, who, misled by his sleepy attitude of non-aggression, emptied leather against him too late. That was all behind them now. They had solemnly agreed two weeks ago that they were through hunting trouble, and, as solemnly, agreed that thirty was a ripe age to settle down to a tranquil life of indolent ease. Hence, to them, a veritable promised land lay beyond the rim of the Davis Mountains, which formed a hazy horizon southward, beyond the rugged Big Bend region and on the other side of the Rio Grande, where a friend, Don Rodrigo, owned a vast rancho needing the services of two top hands such as themselves. Such was their dream." and this trek through the relentless heat and dust of the western tip of Texas marked the fulfillment of it. The trek, however, had not been without its one point of interest. Since leaving Carlsbad yesterday morning, a strange dust cloud had ridden before them, about half the size of the ball of dust raised by their own horses, which marked a lone rider pacing them through the desolate country, a rider Twister surmised who did not crave company, else he would slacken his pace and wait for them to catch up. Chuckaluck noted the phenomenon with casual disinterest, but to Twister's keen mind, any hint of mystery, however slight, was a challenge, and this was the second day of the presence of the mysterious rider, who persistently remained just out of sight on the road ahead of them. My mouth, said Chuckaluck with sudden unexpectedness, lowering the gay bandana. Tastes like I was sprouting sponges. Twister glanced aside at him with a grin. The scar moved, drawing his eye rakishly upward in satanic glee, while the left side of his face held only mild amusement. Work yourself up some spit, Twister advised amiably, and soak up the sponges. Then you can suck them dry, pretending you're laying on your back under one of Don Rodrigo's yam-yam trees with the juice trickling down. If I had your imagination, snorted Chuckaluck, I'd pretend I was eating whiskey icicles hanging from the roof of the Last Chance Saloon in Gunnison, Colorado. Do you recollect when the boys cracked a keg on the roof and she froze afore she hit the ground? Twister remembered vividly, and the blazing heat of the Texas sun became unendurable. This year, Chuckaluck went on with a disgusted wave of his hand toward the parched treeless prairie. It's one hell of a country, 